and welcome to Marcella's Purse. I am Marcella. Today I will be talking to you about the use of cork fabric. I have a couple of samples here for you to see. I will start by telling you that cork fabric is uh, basically one or several layers of cork onto a, a fabric backing or PU material, poly, polyurethane. <laughs> and, um, and I am very happy that it is environmentally friendly because um, cork comes from the cork oak and it is the bark of the tree. And luckily you can peel off the bark and use it in different ways and the tree will produce a new layer. So that's, that makes me very happy. <laughs> and um, as you see, this one is fairly thin like any other fabric and perhaps you can see through uh, the little gaps it's very transparent you can see through the backing of the fabric and um, I am a bit disappointed about it uh, because when I bought it I didn't expect that and I didn't expect, expect it a solid surface I live in a smallish town and for me to get most of the materials many times I have to resort to online as you already know and um, I had to order online and here in the UK I was surprised to see that not many of the suppliers would mention the thickness of the of the fabric as you can see this one is much, much thinner than this one I ordered from two different suppliers, none of them mentioned how thick the material was. And, um, however, I did find that some in Amazon uh, did say uh, the thickness. In most cases it was 0.5 millimeters thick. This one I had to measure and it is one millimeter thick. So that's one th uh, thing to consider. Perhaps you live in a place where there's better information about it. But I know now that every time I want to use this material, I will ha have to either contact the seller or go to Amazon for the few that sell there. Now, um, as I said, I am disappointed that there are so many gaps in the cork because if, I don't know if you can see, this layer of fabric is lots of little pieces of cork stuck together which is, makes a difference compared to this one. This is much solid, not only because the backing is thicker and perhaps it has more layers and, um, but the whole surface is, is um, more even. I know that cork is not a very soft surface, I understand that but uh, in this case, I would expect something a little bit better. In, in, that's my opinion. Now, this one as well is made of pieces of fabric, of, sorry, of cork, very much like a quilt, which is obvious. It has to be like that because bark doesn't come in a very big roll. So we understand that with natural materials. Now, I am going to show you um, how I have been sewing with it. It is normally advertised as washable, waterproof, squishable, like that. And depending on the thickness, of course, you can have different uh, uses for it. Nowadays, some people make shoes, skirts, and even purses and handbags. So that's what the way we're heading. And I also did some tests with um, interfacing, especially with this one that is thin. I have a piece here without any interfacing. And this one I applied some firm interfacing, the very basic one that we have used many times before. And as you know, to apply this you just put the, the glue side of the interfacing on the back of the fabric, you put it on cloth on top and then you iron it and you fuse it that way. I have a sample here with some fusible fleece and as you see I was doing some stitching as well. 
they both work quite well, like with any other fabric. And this one, I had, um, <coughs> I used some fusible foam. And as you know, the foam that I normally use is um, you have to apply it on the back of the fabric and then you iron on top, just with the, on, on directly onto the fabric. Now, um, I was able to apply it and it's stuck to the fabric very well, but I did find that the cork was sticking a bit to the iron. So I put a damp piece of cloth on top of it to prevent any damage to my iron even when the cork seems to be perfect. <coughs> Please, when you are using uh, interfacings and with not just with cork but with any other fabrics, do a bit of test on the fabric that you want to use and follow the instructions of the maker, the producer of the interfacing because you might be using one one kind that is different than the brand I use. Okay, so that was my experiment with the thin material. With the thicker one, just for the fun of it, I did the same testing. Of course, the thicker the, the material you use, the less interfacing you will need. And I have here the, oh, where it is, the basic interfacing, I which I applied on the back. And it worked quite well. It is a little bit firmer than the original, as you can see. And here is the one with the fleece, very well attached, obviously, because the back is uh, some fabric. And the, <clears throat> the fusible foam, as you see, came detached in areas. And I think it is because <clears throat> this being thicker, the heat from the iron struggle to go through and um, perhaps we don't really need to use it with this kind of thickness. An alternative to that if by, by any reason you still want to make this firmer perhaps it could be using two layers of the usual basic interfacing. You apply one, wait for it to fuse properly and then apply a second layer and then you make things firmer. I hope that that's, um, that that's clear, that's not very confusing. Now, I have here my sewing machine and I have already <coughs> been doing some stitching but I want to do some with you watching me so we can uh, exchange. <laughs> Perhaps you at home can watch so me and make a comment and say back to me. My experience I, with court I so far, I hope it, that first is the normal video has been in the sewing machine. You. Um, but I'm then looking forward to making some the project test test later on using the this material. Foot. Thank you for being now, here. I have done some research and, some and I will say, see you soon. Oh, it sews Bye. perfectly well with as any normal fabric. But I'm not so sure about that and I'll show you. So let's do some sewing. Okay, let's start. At the moment I have a normal needle uh, the normal uh, foot on the sewing machine. I'm doing this just to demonstrate. Okay, so we have a piece here of the basic uh, fabric, cork fabric. Okay, it went a little bit slowly and uh, I think that the stitching is a little bit irregular. Okay, so that's one thing. I'm testing here with one of the interfacings, with the firm interfacing, just to see if that makes any difference. did some, some stitching. I still feel that the stitches are not as I would like them to be. They seem pulling a bit, a bit taut. And um, I felt that it was a little bit slow it gliding underneath. So we're going to now test the, the firm 
the thicker piece of cork. one so better. I still think it would be a little bit faster and the stitching seems to be okay. Now this this uh, this one had a bit of um, interfacing at the back. Let's try this one with nothing at the back. It went actually, it went well, a little bit slow I felt, but seems to be okay the stitching. Now I am going to change the foot and I'm going to use this gliding foot and um, I think it's always uh, good to get one because especially if you want to sew not only with um, leather or other thicker materials, some synthetic like faux leather or suede, <clears throat> this um, will work quite well. So let's try again. This piece has interfacing at the back. I felt that it went much more smoothly, it glided much better and I'm happier with the stitching. Let's try the one without in any interfacing. It went, I felt that it went more easily through and a bit faster. Not much difference about the stitching, but uh, overall I think I prefer it with the gliding foot. <coughs> now let's try the gliding foot in this one. No interfacing at the back. That went really well, much better, I think. And um, the stitches are far more even than previously. Now let's try this one with a bit of interfacing at the back. Oh, it went quite well, easily. The stitches quite nicely done. And. Um, <clears throat> Even when I didn't notice a great massive difference, it's, it's a difference enough for me to prefer to use the gliding foot. One more thing is that um, <clears throat> with um, a thicker material, a thicker cork, I would change my needle to either a denim needle or, or a jeans needle or a leather needle. So I'm going to do that, just the average um, size of needle in leather, I'm using the leather needle here, which I would recommend <coughs> excuse me, for, um, for thicker uh, materials such as this. Obviously, leather <laughs> and faux leather. Okay, let's try the the thick cork. It went very nice, and also one of the reasons to use um, a different needle is because otherwise you will be <coughs> damaging the standard needle that is meant to be used in in normal fabrics. 
Okay, just for the fun of it, let's try it with this one. <clears throat> I, I wouldn't, my personal opinion is that I wouldn't change the needle for a thin cork. Um, if it is as thin as this one, because it really feels like any fabric. Yeah, it went nicely. So overall, my experience here, as I said, even when the difference is small, I prefer the gliding foot. I think it helped to keep the stitches in, a, in an even uh, length and uh, position. It didn't wobble too much, as sometimes it happens. I didn't change any of the tension in the sewing machine or anything different. So um, I think that's it. I, uh, my, my suggestion would be use a gliding foot. Try to get one if you don't have one already. Try to go one suitable for the sewing machine that you have and um, change the needle <coughs> to a thicker needle like the leather needle I mentioned if you're using a thick uh, fabric, cork fabric. So that's it for today. I do hope that this has been useful. I think the, the main test will be to make something with these materials. And remember, check before you buy how thick the cork is. So that's it about uh, my experience with cork so far. I hope that this little video has been useful to you and I'm looking forward to making some projects later on using these materials. Thank you for being here. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you soon. Bye!